Tag Assistant is an extension for the Google Chrome browser. Tag Assistant can help you discover the different tags that are firing on your web pages. For example, Google Analytics, Google AdWords, Google Tag Manager, and more. You can get Google Tag Assistant from the Chrome Web Store. When you have installed Google Tag Assistant, you can see it in your Chrome browser next to your address bar. It will look like a small blue tag-shaped icon. Once you have Tag Assistant installed, you can use it by clicking on that blue tag-shaped icon in your Chrome browser. Once you click on it, you can see that Tag Assistant is not active by default. In order to activate it, you click on the blue Enable button. Now that I've clicked the Enable button, you can see that it says Tag Assistant has been activated. Tag Assistant will continue to analyze all of the pages in this tab, so that means that even as I navigate away from this website to other websites, as long as that happens within this same tab in Google Chrome, Tag Assistant will continue to analyze the tags on those pages. Notice also that if I want to analyze the tags for this page, that I'll need to refresh my browser. I'll go ahead and do that now. Now that I've hit refresh, you can see there's a number six on my tag icon. And if I hover over it, it'll tell me that it's found six tags and two suggestions. If I click on the tag icon, I can see the details of what it found. So here we can see some Google Analytics tags, Google Tag Manager tags, a remarketing tag, and even some website call metrics tagging. The advantage of using Tag Assistant is that it gives you very detailed information. For example, if I scroll back up to this first Google Analytics tag and I want to know more information about it, I can click on it. It gives me the property ID. It tells me that this is Universal Analytics as opposed to previous versions of Google Analytics. And it even tells me that it's implemented in Tag Manager and the ID for that Google Tag Manager container. Notice at the bottom that it says there has been one page view request. Sometimes you might see that there are multiple page view requests or a page view and some events firing in Google Analytics. This is really helpful information to know. To get back to the previous screen, I would click on this left arrow up at the top of the Tag Assistant window. Let's take a look at how you might use Google Tag Assistant to debug an implementation on a page. On this Google Tag Assistant demo page, I have implemented Google Tag Manager as well as two Google Analytics properties. If I click on Tag Assistant, we can see two Google Analytics tags as well as one Google Tag Manager tag. You'll notice that there's a little bit of extra information here. Underneath each Google Analytics tag, you can see a faint UA number. This is the ID for that Google Analytics property to help us understand which Google Analytics account and property this data for this tag is being sent to. The same is true with this Google Tag Manager tag. This is the ID of the Google Tag Manager container that has been found on the page. Each of these tags store additional information. I'm going to click on the second Google Analytics tag. Here we can see a suggestion underneath where to optimize. This is saying that it has found this Google Analytics tag outside of the head tag. For this tag, I'm going to decide that that's okay. I can also see that one page view request is being fired. If I click on this page view request, I can see metadata related to this. This might include extra information like custom dimensions or content grouping, depending on what I'm sending to Google Analytics. Since this is a basic tag, it just has the page title. If I click on this URLs tab, I can see the actual URL of the hit that was sent to Google Analytics. This can sometimes contain more detailed information that we might want. In this raw form, it's a little bit tough to read, but if I click on this table icon, it puts this data in a nice readable table for me. One thing I can see here is the full URL of this page as Google Analytics understands it. If I'm having a problem with the URLs that are being sent to Google Analytics, this might be a place I could go to debug it. Navigation in Google Tag Assistant can sometimes be tricky, in order to get back to where we were, I would actually click this little down arrow. 
That takes me back to the previous screen. Now if I click this little left arrow, it'll take me back to the original screen. In Google Tag Assistant, you can record your interaction with a web page. And when you've created a recording, a report is generated that has detailed information as you've navigated through the site. This can be really helpful for things like debugging detailed user activity, where perhaps the user is navigating between multiple pages or interacting with specific elements that you're trying to track. It can also be helpful if you just need more detailed information about what's going on on a page. Let's create an example recording. I'm going to click on my Google Tag Assistant icon and then click the record button. Now the recording feature has been enabled. If I want to include the initial tags that fired when this page loaded, I'll need to refresh the page again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this link. When I click on this link, it should fire an AdWords conversion pixel. Normally, without the recording, I wouldn't be able to see this conversion pixel fire because I would be navigating away from the page too quickly. But since I'm recording, I'll capture that tag firing as I move to the next page. You'll notice now that I'm on the final page, I'm only showing one tag firing. This is the Google Analytics tag that is firing on this page alone. When I click Stop Recording, the recording is complete, and I can click Show Full Report to see the complete report. The Tag Assistant report that it gives you is very thorough, and there's a lot of things we could do with this report. One of the benefits of this report is that it acts as a log. You can save or print this log, and you can share it with other people. This can be really helpful when you're trying to communicate a problem that you're seeing on the website. If we scroll down through this, we can see the first page load on that main Tag Assistant demo page. And we can see the different tags that it captured on that page. This one is that AdWords conversion tracking tag I was hoping to capture. Here is the second page where only the Google Analytics tag is firing. You might remember that on that first page, we were initially only seeing these three tags, the two Google Analytics tags and the Google Tag Manager tag. Seeing this AdWords conversion tracking tag here is great because this is proof that it did fire when we clicked on that element. Another helpful feature of the Tag Assistant report is the Google Analytics report that comes with it. This gives us much more in-depth information on the Google Analytics tags that we're firing. I'm going to click on this Google Analytics report. It's analyzing my recording. It pulls up a window to select the views that you want to look at. These are the views in your Google Analytics account. You'll notice that it has this Google Analytics test property selected with the view underneath it that it thinks I want to see. If I try to look at the data for this one, it will give me an error because I don't have access to this property. So in order to see the detailed Google Analytics report for a specific Google Analytics property, you need to be logged into an account that has access to that Google Analytics data. You'll notice that in this property at the bottom, for enor.com, I have a little red exclamation point. That means it's found an alert that it wants me to see. I'm going to click on that property and click OK. Right away, it gives me a clue as to what the problem is. It's telling me that event hits must be sent after a page view hit but we are seeing an event that was not preceded by a page view. This was implemented intentionally for the purposes of this demo. If we scroll down, in this flow section, we can actually see where the error occurred in the flow as the user, me, was navigating around on the reports. I can see that this error is next to page load one. If I click on page load one, I'll get a drop down, and I can see the specific hit with the error. Now we're in the detailed Google Analytics report. The Google Analytics report that you get is really great because it includes a lot of extra information. For one, we can see right away what the alert is. This is telling us that event hits must be sent after a page view hit, but the Google Analytics report has found an event hit that was not preceded by a page view. This means that we tried to fire a Google Analytics event on a page without firing the primary page view. This view summary gives us more information on the Google Analytics data that is tied to this session. Underneath audience, we can see that the browser was Chrome, 
the operating system was Windows, what the language was, and the number of sessions that were recorded. As the user, we know this information, but if we wanted to export this data and send it to someone else, having this information recorded here would be very helpful. Acquisition shows us what our traffic sources were. Here we can see that the traffic source was direct and then none, which also means direct. This can be helpful if we're trying to diagnose campaign tracking. For example, if we're concerned that campaign data is being lost as a user is navigating through a website, this might be a section of this report that would help us understand some of that. We can also see data on the first page hit, last page hit, any events that were sent, the number of events, the number of sessions, and etc. If we had completed a conversion, we would see this data here as well. Down in this flow section of the report, we can see in more detail where that error actually occurred. Remember that in that example, we loaded two separate pages. I can see that the error was on the first page. By opening this up, I can see that on the first page, one hit was set for this Google Analytics property. It also marks that this was the start of a session. The session start marker can be helpful when you're trying to make sure that Google Analytics is recording the correct number of sessions and not breaking a single session into multiple sessions. There's a fair amount of data recorded with this hit. We can see the title of the page for the event. We can see that it was an event. We can see the page URL for the event, the host name. We can see the campaign data at this point. So again, keep in mind that as we're navigating through a flow report, having this campaign information is helpful in understanding when campaign data might change. We can see information on the event, in this case, a category and action. The category was set to page loaded, and the action was set just to the URL of the page itself. This means that this event was created in order to record page load. This isn't a recommended event, but we created it for the purposes of this demo. Let's take a look at one more example of how you can use the recording to do more advanced debugging with Google Tag Assistant. In this example, let's say that I'm coming to this Google Tag Assistant demo page from a social media campaign. So in my URL, I have tagging for UTM source, which is set to Facebook, UTM medium, which is set to social, and UTM campaign, which is set to social campaign. My goal is to have users land on this page from a social ne network and then click over to www.enor.com to complete a conversion action there. The problem that I think I might be seeing in my Google Analytics data is that I'm getting a lot of referral traffic when I don't think that I should be. I want to use Google Tag Assistant to see if this campaign information is being kept intact as the user is navigating between these two pages. First, I'm going to enable my recording by clicking on the Google Tag Assistant icon and clicking record. Then I'm going to refresh the page. This is to capture those initial tags in the recording. Then I'm going to click on this link and I'm going to let the linked page load completely. Now I'm going to go into Tag Assistant and I'm going to hit stop recording. Go to show full report. And then because I'm doing an in-depth analysis of Google Analytics, I'm going to click into the Google Analytics report specifically. Now we have lots of interesting things. We already covered the alert shown in enor.com. This new alert in this legacy ga.js is the one I've created for this demo. I'm going to click on this and hit OK. And remember that I have to have access to these Google Analytics views in order to see any of this information. Without having access to the view, you will still get some debugging information, but it won't be nearly as in-depth. Now I can see a couple of alerts that are almost certainly related to the issues that I'm seeing. For example, this hit starts a new session, most likely because the client ID changed. This is caused by an improper tracking code implementation. It also says this hit's tracking code library does not match the tracking code library used in the other hits to this property. What that means is that the data is being sent to this Google Analytics property in two different ways. Here in the summary, even just in the audience section, we can already see a problem. I want this to be treated as one session as the user is navigating across these domains. But in Google Analytics, it's being recorded as two sessions. Underneath acquisition, I can see the different traffic sources for each session. So I can see that I have one session that is recording Facebook, social, and social campaign as expected. But then I have another session where the source is Google Analytics test the medium is referral, 
and there's a referral path, which is my Tag Assistant demo page. As I scroll down, for one, I can see that I have a session start flag on both page views. This means that a session is being started on each of these pages. When I click into these, so I'm clicking into this first page load, and then I'm clicking into this page view, I can see that on this first page view, it records the Facebook social and social campaign data correctly. If I click into the second page load and the second page view, I can see that this is where the source and medium are recorded as Google Analytics test and referral. The reason that we are seeing this error in particular is because we are navigating across two separate domains. So we are navigating between googleanalyticstest.com, which is where the first page is located, and www.enor.com, which is where the second page is located. In order to treat navigation across these two domains as the same session and keep the original campaign source information, we need to implement cross-domain tracking, which has not been implemented here. If we had attempted to implement cross-domain tracking, this would tell us that we had failed in that implementation and that something needs to be addressed in the implementation itself. Keep in mind, of course, that all of these errors have been generated intentionally for the purposes of this demo. This concludes our Google Tag Assistant demo video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you can now use Google Tag Assistant to help you debug and uncover information about Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager, as well as other Google products that might be implemented on a page. To learn more about analytics tools and services, or to hear about updates for our training, keep an eye on our blog. We post a lot of great industry updates here, as well as other educational videos.